please welcome to the stage, Shumong Mo. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. My name is Shumong Mo. I was lucky enough to be born as a very dreamy child. Life inside my head is so much more interesting. However, I lived in a realistic environment that values so-called rationality and objectivity, in which daydreams usually means for distraction and are treated as barriers to success. This interesting conflict finally led me to a journey exploring the human mind. After much research, I found that our, our unconscious mind is very powerful in providing in consolations and decision-making abilities however, in an absurd way. Today, I'm gonna show you four absurd ways of living your life, but useful ways too. As I mentioned, I started my exploration from daydream and fantasy. I interviewed a group of the most creative people, science fiction novelists, speculative designers, game designers, psychologists, one interviewee, Dr. Wu Yan, told me that many people think fantasy is escaping them, but in my opinion, fantasy is twisted reality. It can cure psychological harm. According to psychiatrist George Volent, fantasy is actually a kind of defense mechanism which are specific ways of coping brought by the unconscious mind to decrease anxiety caused by uncomfortable situations that threaten your self-esteem. There are four maturity levels of defense mechanisms, pathological, immature, neurotic, and mature defense. These defense mechanisms may distort or falsify reality, which is absurd, but you know, everybody knows how to use them, at least unconsciously. However, in our life, there are a lot of people who told me that they don't know how to comfort their friends because when a person is emotionally hurt, it's really hard for them to listen to objective suggestions. So what if there's a service that can inspire people to learn to comfort other better um, using defense mechanisms, which we already use for ourselves? So I designed a chatbot called Sour Grape. Let's look at a fictional example. The evil queen walked to the magic mirror and asked who is the most beautiful woman in the world? The magic mirror is actually the most objective object I have ever seen. Evil Queen is its friend, but it's still said that Snow White is the most beautiful woman. Let's say the magic mirror wants to comfort the queen. Sour Grape, my friend Evil Queen is jealous of Snow White. What can I say to her? Maybe you can say, although you're not as beautiful as she is, you're much better at magic. Or you don't want to be the most beautiful woman. Beauty fades. Or, although you're not the most beautiful woman, you're the mother of the most beautiful woman. <laughs> By the way, there are also some other ways to make her feel better. Well, show me. You can either buy her beer <laughs> or plastic surgery gift card. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's one more level of functionality. If you click into each sentence, you can see which kind of defense mechanism it applied and learn more about it. For example, if you click the second one, you'll see that this is called rationalization. And there are more examples of the application of it. We've learned how to comfort other people. How about ourselves, especially in a desperate situation? Two years ago, when I was an anxiously waiting for the offer to products of design, I would say to myself that if Alan gives me the offer, I promise to work hard in the future. You know, I promise to work hard, not because I want to work hard. In a desperate situation, we're not usually sensible or logical. You might just make a kind of magical deal with yourself or a promise to be a more decent person in the hope that it will affect the outcome of things. When we're desperate, we try everything. This reaction is called magical thinking, which is also a kind of neurotic defense. You may find that in our life, sometimes we have wishes that we can control, such as we don't know if we can find our lost animal, we don't know if another person will agree to be our boyfriend or girlfriend, or if we can recover from cancer diagnosis. We always say that we're anxious, but how do we let other people understand our anxiety? 
What if there's an app that you can go to every time you can only cross your finger for something? Of course, this app is called Cross. On this platform, you can make all sorts of magical deals with yourself by typing your wish and promise in exchange for the wish to come true. Once the deal is made, your wish and promise will show up in a feed where your friends can reveal, like, and comment. Imagine there are two people both want to find their lost parrot. One promises to give $10 to whoever brings it to him, but one promises to volunteer for the Wild Bird Fund for a year. Which one do you think cares more about a parrot? Will she feel sadder if she can find hers? If their wish comes true, they have to keep the promise under the eyes of the friends. However, if the wish doesn't come true, Cross also provides a platform for them to get comfort from their friends. Besides consolation, our unconscious mind also plays an important role in our decision making, but also in a quite absurd way. How many people trust your intuitions? Raise your hand. Hmm, quite a lot. Well, how many of you trust other people's intuitions? Much less. <laughs> it's an interesting that mm, if you want to be taken seriously when you make a decision, you have to tell a bunch of reasons. If you are in other field other than the area of design, answering that I use my intuition won't get you very far. According to Gerd Gierens, our direct director of the Center for Adaptive Behaviors and Cognition FC at the Max Planck Institute for Human Development, Berlin, Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Intuition is the ability of instinctively understanding what information is important and thus can be discarded. So to celebrate the unexplainable ability, I created an experience around intuition called Instalit. Instalit is an experiential, experiential game show where people are motivated to use their intuition to, to take quick actions in response to the challenges. Participants are divided into groups of two and compete to see who has a better intuition. Here's a video of it. Targeting indecisive people who have irrational fears of making the wrong choices and very easy to overanalyze, especially in situations where there's no significant difference between a better choice and the worst choice. I found that paying more attention to intuition can help them build a habit of making quick decisions. Another scientist, Zhang Hens, found that Actually, the idea of snap decisions happen all the time. Your unconscious make a decision seven seconds before you even realize the decision. So what if there's a timer that only measures seven seconds and you have to make a decision within seven seconds? Once you have the first decision, there will be no time left, left to think twice. So I tear down tons of things, including kitchen timer. This one exploded. The next time I learn to be smart, <laughs> figuring out the mechanical structure, how the size, made some prototype, more prototype, more prototype. <laughs> Finally, I designed Cuckoo. Cuckoo is an accessory that you can wear it around your neck or clip onto your jacket to help you make quick decisions.
Roku is not much a timer. It's really a reminder to remind you that you already know and that you should be, be pleased, be okay with the decision that you already made within the first seven seconds. Now you learned four absurd but useful ways to solve problems in your life. And I'm sure there are more. I hope my designs can inspire you and build a better um, connection between you, other people, and the you in you. Thank you so much. I love the idea of absurd intelli intelligence. So Howard Gardner was the, was the person who came up with multiple intelligences in the mid 80s and then there was emotional intelligence. And I'm sorry, I don't have a date for that. Um, but absurd intelligence, this is the moment. So you're gonna have to write the book. I mean, I know you already wrote a book. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's, it's very interesting to me that most people view emotion the opposite of rationality when they make a decision. But isn't that the em empathy is something that mm, people spend their whole life to learn? So um, it inspired me to challenge the idea of, um, of intelligence. And I certainly find there's something valuable in absurdity because um, one of my interviewees told me that um, it's always something that people ignore, but including deep needs of the society. Something absurd in the past, maybe something serious in the future. Oh, yeah. interesting. Um, this idea about asking somebody's advice uh, that you were talking about back in class, that if you have a question for somebody, no matter what answer they, they say, it serves. Because if they tell you what you don't want to do, you're like, nah, you know what, uh, I'm going to do the other thing. And if they tell you what you do want to do, you're like, exactly, I'm totally going to do that. Uh, the seven second thing, tell me a little bit more about this idea that we already know in under seven seconds. I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, mm, so um, I think mm, people in the society rely heavily on conscious reasoning and logical thinking, but ignore our unconscious mind also process information even when we are not consciously thinking about things. Um, it definitely, part of them are um, emotion, part of them are unconscious reasoning. So mm, I think it's very interesting um, to uh, use design to, um, um, to let people to pay more attention to their subconscious. Yeah, and productizing is interesting. Um, do you already know that we're out of time? Um, no. <laughs> I'll just wait a few seconds, up until seven. Thanks so much. Thank you.